Hi guys and welcome to today's video on application of matrices, general maths. <laughs> oh, what is it? Doesn't matter. Maths is a constant. My name's Darren, maths guru. Welcome to my channel. If you are new, if you're a sort of an old hand, welcome back. Good to see you. If you can, do me a favor and subscribe. That would be greatly appreciated. But what are we doing with our learning objectives today? We're going to understand how to apply the multiplication of matrices to real world situations. So in a previous video, we looked at multiply matrices by a scalar and when we've got to multiply them by each other. But the question is that whole row column thing. But the question is, why are we doing this? What possible reason would we want to do that? Well, I've got an example from the Cambridge General Mass textbook. Thank you very much, Cambridge, for allowing me to use your stuff. You guys are freaking awesome. It's a really, really outstanding resource. Now, if you're watching this and you're not already found mathsguru.com, head over to mathsguru.com where you can download notes, sign up for free. There's time codes, there's exam questions. There's loads of stuff over there for you. All right, including all of these videos by textbook order. But let's get going. Recap of past learning. As I say, we've already done a load of stuff. We've looked at the sort of basics of matrices, the language, we've looked at adding them, multiplying by scalars, and multiplying by each other. And that talked about orders of matrices and all those type of things. If you haven't watched the videos, again, head to mathscrew.com where you can see them. Right, example. Let's look at the example that I have. Fatima and Gaia. Hopefully I've said that right. A store has a specialist sales promotion. One free cinema ticket is given with each DVD purchased. Cool. Tell me where that is. Two cinema tickets are given with the purchase of each computer game. Definitely there myself. The number of DVDs and games sold by Fatima and Gaia are given by matrix S. So if we see here, we have matrix S there. Obviously, it is important to know that we have DVDs and games. So each column, if you remember back to what we said before, stands for something, all right? So they're not just random numbers, they generally stand for something, yeah? And obviously, the whole idea when you're in sales, generally people want to know who's selling what and they get commission. <laughs> Fatima and Gaia, all right? So we've got Fatima and Gaia. The selling price of a DVD in a game, together with the number of free tickets, is given by matrix P. So we've now got two matrices, and the second matrix is giving you the number of DVDs and games sold, and the number of tickets, yes, that are there for them, right? So the selling price of a DVD, all right? Selling price of a DVD, together with the number of free tickets is given. As I said, the DVDs, $20, one free ticket, games, $30, two free tickets. I'd be loading up on games myself. Now it says, find the matrix product of S times P and interpret. Okay, so the first thing is, let's do that multiplication. So if you remember, we've got seven, four, five, six, and we're gonna multiply that by 20, one, 30, and two. Now again, remember the order that we put the matrices is defined by the question. It says it wants the S first, followed by the P. And if we did it the other way, we'd actually get very, very different information, but more on that in a moment. All right, so when we multiply this, if you remember, we're going to check the order works. So that's a two by two, and that's also a two by two. Are the middle numbers the same? They are. So my outer numbers are gonna give me the dimensions of my final matrix. Okay, so what goes here? Well, that is effectively matrix with the address one, one. And so we're going to do the first row times the first column. So, and that's going to give me 7 times 20 plus 4 times 30. Well, 7 times 20 is 140. 4 times 30 is 120. And so add those together, it's going to give me 260. So that's the first one. What's the address of this? It's the first row and the second column. So we're going to do row 1 times column two. So again, in this situation, we're gonna do the seven and the four, but we're gonna multiply it by the one and the two now. So we're gonna end up with seven times one plus four times two, or seven times one is seven, four times two is eight, add those together, is going to give me 15. ka -ching. What are we doing here? Well, again, my address is now gonna be two, one, second row, first column. So we're now gonna do five times six plus, sorry, Try that one again. Huh. Five times 20 plus six times 30. Well, five times 20 is 100. Six times 30 is 6, 12, 18, 180. Add those together, gives me 280. And ka-ching, the last one is going to be two, two. Second row, second column. So there we're gonna do five times one plus six times two, which is five plus 12, which is going to give me 17. Now the question goes on and says, and interpret. 
Well, the problem we now have is, what does it mean by interpret? Hmm. Well, if we look at just the matrix on its own, that's the product here. So all I've done is taken that matrix now, written it out as 260, 15, 20, 280, 17. It doesn't make any sense to me. But it will do when we work out what our matrix result is going to be. Now, by that, what I mean is, if we look at the fact that we've got DVD, so let's write that as DVD, and we've got games, and we've got Fatima and Gaia. Now, if we look at our multiplication, and again, I'm going to do DVD here, and I'm going to do games, and then I'm going to have dollars, and I'm going to have tickets. What do we notice? Well, first things first, our order of our DVDs and games matches our row here of DVD by games. So that's awesome. They're the ones we're actually pairing up. And the way I think of this now is that means that I have my columns as Fatima and Gaia. Uh, sorry, my rows as Fatima and Gaia. I do that every single time. And my columns are dollars and tickets. What do I mean by that? So let's see now. My columns are dollars and tickets and my rows are Fatima and Gaia. Now, getting those the right way around is really, really important to then be able to show us what it is we're actually sort of interpreting or what this actually means. So what it means is, if we read each individual thing, that the column here stands for how much money each of Fatima and Gaia actually earn in sales. All right, so Fatima earned $260 in sales and Gaia $280 in sales, which means if we then look at the second column, which is the number of tickets that were given away, Fatima would have had 15 tickets and Gaia would have had 17 tickets. And when it's asking you to interpret, it wants you to go, well, okay, what do the columns now stand for? And can I then write a sentence? And this here is an example of a sentence. Now, here is another example where, again, we're going to multiply some matrices together and then we're going to interpret what has come out. Now, in this situation, it says we've got S, A, and B. All right, so what we're going to do is evaluate S times B. All right, so this is going to take some time to write out. So we've got 27, 9, 34, 59, 18, 15, 10, 89. We've got 35, 6, 46, and 29. So what's the first one we're doing? We're going to S times B. So it's this one here. So that is my column matrix of 1, 1, 1, and 1. So can I multiply these together? Well, I suppose the first thing we need to do is make sure that our order is defined. So how many rows have we got? 3 by 4 columns. And this is how many rows? Uh, 4 by 1 column. Are those middle numbers the same? Kuching, they are. Which means we're going to end up with a 3 by 1. So there is my three by one. And now let's do our multiplication. So this one here is going to be address one one, as it were. So we've got the first row by the first column. Well, interestingly, if we look at our first row and multiply it by our first column, we're going to get 27 times one plus nine times one plus 34 times one plus 59 times one. Well, multiply a number by one and it stays the same. So we're going to get 27 plus 9, plus 34, plus 59. Grabbing my trusty calculator, 27 plus 9 plus 34 plus 59 gives me the grand total of 129. Now that value is going to go in there. Now you're going to say, well, why did I use a calculator for that? Basically, I've recorded too many videos that I've made mistakes by doing stuff in my head, uh, just silly, silly mistakes, and it just saves me from re-recording it. So please, if you can do that in your head, knock yourself out. Right, what's this one here? It's now row two, column one. So I'm now going to do the second row by the first column. All right, so now we're going to do 18 times one. Here, hold on a moment. Plus 15 times one, plus 10 times one, plus 89 times one. Well, hold on. All we seem to be doing with this particular column uh, matrix, the one, 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 is we seem to just be adding all the numbers in this row. So actually, I can just do 18 plus 15 plus 10 plus, what is that, 89? He says, struggling to read his own handwriting, 132. And so I suppose if I look at this one here, and only in this particular case where I've got ones all in that column, I'm just going to do 35 plus 6 plus 46 plus 29, which is going to give me 100. 
and 16. So that thing there, that column matrix with all the ones, seems to be adding all of the numbers in each row. And actually, that's what we're coming to later on. All right. So basically, all those ones add the rows. Column of ones add the rows. ka -ching. Thank you very much. All right. What information about matrix S is given for the product S times B? OK. So bearing in mind, we had here Aaron, Barra, and Chloe. And we had cats, dogs, foxes, and rabbits. And what do all of these ones stand for? Yep. Cats, dogs, foxes and rabbits, because they match up, that must mean that these values here are A, B and C. And what it actually stands for is the total number of pets or feral animal sightings that Aaron has, Barra has and Chloe has. So Aaron would have seen 129 feral animals. Barra, or Barra would have seen 132 and Chloe 116. Now, moving on to this, we have to notice and not get tricked, which I just did in my previous recording of this little bit of a section. I got so carried away that it was going to be S times A, and then it didn't work. But the question is, how did I know it didn't work? When I did S times A, when I did S times A, how did I know it didn't work? Well, I checked the order of the matrices to see if they were defined, then realized it wasn't defined and that I must have made a mistake, which then caused me to look back at the question and go, oh, Muppet, this time they're asking you to do A times S. So let's do that one, one, one. ka -ching. and we got uh, 27, 9, 34, 59. What do we do? 18, 15, 10, 89, 35, 6, 46, and 29. And let's just check, are they defined? So rows one by three, and this one is a three by four. Are they defined ka -ching? And that's going to give me a one by four. So one row by four columns. Can we work out what this is going to be adding up? Let's see what happens. So let's now do this first one here, which is one, one. So first row by first column. So this is my row. I'm always going to do that one, but by my first column. So I'm going to end up with one times 27 plus one times 18 plus one times 35. What do we notice? Well, really what we're then getting is 27 plus 18 plus 35. That's that first column of numbers added together. So banging that into my calculator, 27 plus 18 plus 35. He says, typing the wrong thing completely, 35. This is what happens, gives me the grand total of 80. Now ask yourself the question, what does that 80 now stand for? We're going to move on to the next one, which is row one, column two. So again, one, one, one. Now we're going to multiply by 9, 15, and 6. Well, actually, we're going to add 9, 15, and 6, which is going to give me the value of 30. And knowing this, I can actually continue and do 34 plus 10 plus 46, which gives me 90, and breaking my own rule of not drawing that last thing in, when I should have done 59 plus that plus that, gives me 177, and now we interpret it. What does it actually stand for? Well, if we're adding all those numbers in the columns, then it must be the total number of feral cats, total number of feral dogs, total number of feral foxes, and total number of feral roxes, uh, roxes? rabbits, or as my daughter calls them, bunny. Now, what has this got to do with anything? Those rows of ones, and those column ones are called summing matrices. They sum rows or columns. How do you remember which one it is? Well, sort of it's the opposite of what you actually think. If it's a row of numbers, it's adding the columns. And if it's a column of numbers, it's adding the rows. The thing you've got to make sure you do is multiply them the right way around. So generally speaking, the row matrix goes before and the column matrix goes after. Believe it or not, guys, that's the end of this video. Stick around. There is a couple more minutes of the video left, but I, hopefully that has helped. If it has, leave me a comment below on uh, YouTube. If you're on YouTube, just let me know what you thought. If you can spread the word to your mates, your teachers, and let them know what the videos are like, I'd be deeply, deeply grateful. All right, hopefully, stay for a couple more minutes. If not, I'll see you soon. 
Thanks very much for watching, guys. Yes, this is the end of another video. If you haven't already done so, can you click on my subscribe button? Yes, it doesn't mean anything other than the fact that I know that you are watching. Yes, it's greatly appreciated. Otherwise, I feel like I'm sitting here just talking to myself. And then, yes, there is mathsguru.com, of which you can see a still of now. And what is over there? Well, all the videos ordered by textbook, ordered by topic. You can search for the videos. You can download notes time codes, exam questions, and so, so much more coming up. Yeah, it's absolutely free to join. So I'm done. Thank you very much. I hope to see you in another video. Give me a shout out to your mates if you can. I just want to make sure that everyone finds maths interesting and easy. All right, take care, guys. See you again. Bye-bye. Stay safe.